Okay, so throughout our World of Logs videos, we've looked at things like, am I sucking in DPS? Am I missing out on certain obvious things? All this kind of stuff, including how to set up and actually start using World of Logs. But World of Logs is most prevalent when we apply to a new guild. They always ask us for World of Logs. And you might be a raid leader and you're asking for World of Logs, but you're not quite sure what it is that you're looking for. Today we're going to look at what a raid leader is looking at, or what I think a raid leader should be looking for when analysing a prospective new player's World of Logs. Or if you're running a raid, what should you be analysing? There are a lot of questions like, hey, should I be investigating each and every person's individual World of Logs to see exactly what they're doing? Should I be taking it to that kind of level? Because that can take a very long time. I'm going to show you five or six different ways of looking at World of Logs really quickly to start spotting some weak links and prospective strong players that are in your raid and think about what a raid leader might be looking at when they look at your World of Logs. So let's jump into it. Okay, so World of Logs from a raid leader standpoint can be sort of a daunting task. How far do you go into what you need to find out? Well, in fact, as a raid leader, you want to look at very general things. You don't expect to be the guy who checks every person individually. Sure, you can do that and try and trust your knowledge that you understand what you're looking at. But as a raid leader, we're looking for various things that are bound to push our player base better and find out exactly who's letting us down. So first things first, you're going to log into your report and you're going to see the various dashboard here. Now this dashboard is generally quite useless. It's not going to be something you really want. First things, let's look at a kill. So let's go to the stone guard. Now in this report, as I've said, I've tried to create some errors that would be easy for us to find. Probably someone's got to push me that little bit further and do a little bit more errors. But I did try so we can look at myself and see what's going on. So firstly, let's look at our damage done. In our damage done tab, the first thing we want to look at is the overall activity of our players. What you don't want to see if you're using a normal mode or heroic progression is more than a couple of percent difference between the top active person and the bottom active person. That means that if the top DPSer has got 97%, we want to be looking at other people and make sure they're not more than a couple of percent behind that. When we start seeing people at 95% and people at 94%, there's definitely an issue there that they should have been able to address. Remember though that your activity is how much time they were DPSing for. If that boss has a phase change or phases a player out into a different area, then your activity will be adjusted accordingly, okay? So don't expect everybody to always be 100%. It's very much boss dependent. What you should see is in a straight up fight is not more than a couple of percent difference between the top and the bottom. As we flick through this, we should order this by activity time. Now, as we can see, I was a top active DPS of 98.5%. So I don't want to see anybody more than a couple of cent percent below me. So everybody below 96, I'm going to start questioning what the hell they were doing during the fight. We've got a Warlock at 95, a Warrior at 94, and all the way down here, you can see we've even ended up here with a Monk at 92%. However, this Monk might be a, DP uh, a healer, so we need to bear that in mind. We certainly have a Mage here at 92%. These are the guys I'm going to start watching for. Why are you so far below? 6% less activity time is definitely a problem. That is a problem that needs to be addressed. More so than the actual DPS of the players is what were you doing during that time? We need to find out what the hell these players were doing. Everybody should be up here. Only the tank should be the highest, okay? The tank should be the guy who pulls. And as you can see, our tank, Salidia, was uh, one of the tanks here. 99.6% and me just behind him. Just a 1% difference there as we charged in. Which is literally the difference between between the pull and getting everybody in position. Keep good eyes on this. The next thing you want to check for me is when you're looking for people who do things like interrupting, okay? So to do this, you're going to go back to your dashboard and you're also going to bring up the overall report, the full report. Pete, when it comes to choosing interrupters, it's quite a task of usually asking for volunteers. That is the wrong way to go about it. As a raid leader, you should know who are your best interrupters. Interrupts is easily seen on the overall report. I want interrupters who are not only able to interrupt during a fight, but are also actively interrupting as part of their normal playing routine. This is really important, okay? You need to be able to pick people straight off the bat. So on this screen, on your main dashboard, a full report, come down to interrupts here. 
Now, as you can see, out of this entire raid, only four people bothered to interrupt. And in fact, two of them only did it once. You can see I was dramatically far ahead, even by five. This raid doesn't require a lot of interrupts by any means, but seeing a dramatic difference like that is something you need to be aware of. So if I had a fight that required interrupts, straight off the bat, I'm probably going to pick myself and Littlefield. I'm not going to ask for volunteers. I'm really not. I'm going to say, hey, you two should be the interrupters because you are naturally interrupting anyway. You know the importance of that. Similarly with dispels. As you can see here, the, the mage was actually the top dispeller. Only one dispel came from a healer, our friend Gallus there, only one. Whereas Andrew Jass was performing seven dispels himself. Perhaps they were just on himself from, uh, from casting spells on himself. So you should be aware of that. But we're looking for dispellers. In this raid, not a great amount of dispelling was done. Although the opportunity definitely was there to dispel. We can see that from the amount that was done. Over an entire raid, only one healer bothered to dispel. Same with interrupts, okay? Over an entire raid, I managed to do five, and that was with not trying. I wasn't trying to top the interrupt meter. I was just doing the odd one when my fingers basically couldn't stop me doing it. Uh, the rest of the guys just managed to pull off the odd interrupts when necessary. Very important as a raid leader to be able to pick people. Remember, raid leading is not a democracy. You should be deciding who does what. If I was going to have an interrupt boss fight, I would certainly be looking for me and Littlefield there to say, you guys do natural interrupts. I know you can do it. I've seen it on the report. Reports, we're going to choose you. The next point you want to look at is people taking absurd amounts of damage for no reason. Very difficult for a raid to carry a player like that. So for this one, we're going to go to damage done and we're going to, uh, for damage taken, let me just click damage taken there, and we're going to pick a fight where there's a lot of natural damage. Again, the stone guard. The stone guard has the amethyst pools, okay? The amethyst pools are always a dangerous thing, but they can be avoided. They could be a couple of ticks. So in this fight, I try to take a couple of ticks to show you and demonstrate this. But so we'll click on me, select me, and then we're going to look at damage by spell, okay? So if you look down, there's Amethyst Pool. That's one of these things that can be avoided, Amethyst Pool. What we can do from there is actually select Amethyst Tool and see who took the most damage from it. Now, as you can see, I tried to stand in the Amethyst Pools for a little while, taking 323,000 damage from that and 10 ticks. However, what we can see up here straight away is... Lots of people took more than me. We had a hunter here taking a lot more. This uh, monk taking a hell of a lot more. Zapper taking a lot more. And then we get into three notably failed players. And including Holy Chit, who took twice as much as the second player. 30% of the damage. He took 2,673,000 oh, 2, damage from Amethyst Pools with 43 ticks. This is a player who is very unaware of his surroundings. We can see that immediately. We have hard facts here that allow us to demonstrate that. We can see straight away, hey, holy shit, there's a problem here. You have a serious issue with your environmental awareness. That is a major problem, and that is the healing that the other healers don't want to deal with. That's damage they don't want to be coping with. If this was a normal or heroic raid, holy shit would certainly have died. But in this one, he managed to stand in it and be healed tremendously through that for taking 2.7 million damage through that fight from something that was completely avoidable. You can do this through every fight. There's usually something that can be avoided and we want to find out who the hell is doing that. And more importantly, who isn't taking any damage? The lower, the better. There's some environmental awareness here that is pretty good. You're always going to get a couple of ticks. Don't expect everybody to be at zero. That is just unlikely to happen. But we definitely need to know, hey, who's using and abusing our healers at the moment we can see these top three definitely causing a major problem in fact anybody above me who is seeking out amethyst pools throughout the majority of this fight is something we need to be aware of Let's look at a fight with some straight up DPSing, okay? We would expect to see normal things here, especially if we had a balanced raid of decent players. But one time or another, you'll see one of your greatest players who seems to be really low down for some reason. So let's take me, for example. We would expect me, in general, to be quite high up in this DPS me. We would expect to see some good things coming out of me. However, I was down here with only 50k single target DPS. That's a little bit low. What the hell could be the reason for that? Especially with 99.3% activity time. Time, that would be pretty crazy if we order this you can see I was the third most active person there I would also note, and let's take a look at this, that Holy Chit had 99%, not 0.8% uptime, but only 25k DPS. That seems rather strange. We had 99.4% coming from cooldowns, and he only had 24k DPS. So let's take a quick look at cooldowns. Uh, with such high activity time and such low DPS, we would expect to see something pretty normal. As we can see coming through here, 
We only had him hitting two mutilates through the whole fight, which is very strange. We had a garrot. He had pure uptime. This is a guy who was AFKing the fight. It's pretty damn obvious. If through the entire boss fight he only managed to do two mutilates, <laughs> then there's definitely a huge problem there. The rest of it was melee attack, which is rather strange. We want to see what the hell was going on here. This is obviously a sort of exaggerated uh, look at a player that's really been AFK through the whole fight. He had huge uptime and basically just auto attacked the boss to death. He never casted a single in Venom. These are the kind of things you want to look out for straight away, okay? Everything looks normal, but we can see straight away there that there's some huge problems. If we then was to select our friend Holy Chip, let's select your Holy Chip. Holy Chit again had huge uptime. What the hell was the problem there? Oh, Holy Chit is actually using all of his abilities. What the hell is going on there? Why did you have such high uptime, but such low DPS? There must be an issue there, and it doesn't seem to be that you're not using any of your spells. You had 29 Templars Verdicts. You seem to be using everything normally. For a brief look, remember you're a raid leader. You're not supposed to go in and count the exact amount of judgments. But what we can see straight away is, oh my god. He had dodged attacks and missed attacks. What the hell is this? This is what hit cap does, okay? And why hit cap is super important. Hit cap is just going to cause you major problems. You can see he missed 5% of his judgments. Crusader strike, he missed 6% of his crusader strikes. And he missed 3%. He dodged. Was dodged 3% on his crusader strikes. This is really, really dangerous. Especially if you look at Templar's Verdict, which is his hardest hitting spell. With an average crit of 72,000. Missing 72,000 with 2.9% dodge and 3% miss. That's a major issue that you should be looking into with your raiders. Is hey, you need to understand the importance of being hit capped. The fact that you were active for so much of the fight. And probably not casting as many spells as you like. Such as using Hammer of the Righteous on a single target boss. Which is a little bit crazy to say the least. But still, it's very quick to mouse over people like this. And say hey, you know what? You are, you're being missed. You're, you're not hit on expertise caps, and that's causing you major damage issues. A quick change like that, and a quick word from your Rayleigh to say you really need to get hit in expertise caps, because that's going to actually cause us major problems down the line. It's really affecting your DPS, probably more than your rotation, which is not something we like to see at all. As you can see again with our Arcane Mage, again with very high activity time, he missed 3% of his Arcane Blasts. He missed 6% of his Arcane Missiles, and his arcade barrage was missed 14% of his arcade barrages. His main finisher was missed 14% of the time. He did not make contact with those spells. And when something has an average crit of 210,000, missing 14% of 210,000 is a really bad situation to be in. Being hit capped is super important. You might think as a railer, it's not my job to check these things, but it certainly is. The other thing I want to show you is if we go into an individual person, is that in World of Logs, everybody who takes part in the fight is actually called a actor, a damage by actor. So an actor is also the boss, it's also the people who are involved in the fight. So if we click the actor, which is Garajala Spirit Binder, let's just open that up quickly. Everything is called an actor, which is kind of important. So we'll scroll down here. You can see the damage by spell. He was doing melee, sweeping kicks, hammer fists, left hooks, and right crosses. And he took damage from all these things. I then want to look at damage by actor. This is important for people who are not DPSing ads correctly, okay? Now, it's pretty easy on a boss like uh, the LFR that I did with mostly single target fights to not count this, but we want to see people who are DPSing ads and more importantly, those who are not DPSing ads. A key feature of being a raid leader is knowing who the hell is slacking and who the hell is doing their job because you don't want everybody picking up all sorts of different slack for other people. A good example is Madness of Deathwing. Tentacle DPS. How many people were trying to cheese DPS elsewhere? Who isn't DPSing those corrupted tentacles? Who's slacking on the blistering tentacles? Those will all be listed as actors. And therefore, we can select that actor, like I selected Garajal the Spirit Binder. And I can see very quickly who was doing the damage to those fights. So, Della. Rampush all the way down to probably uh, this is a good deep spread here up to about 5% between uh, Della and Littlefield We're all DPSing the target correctly, but something went strange here as we can see we only have 1% damage from the Warlock We're actually contributing to Garajal the Spirit Binder, which is really strange Which means he was down below and DPSing other things quite consistently But it's really cost him on his actual boss DPS. His boss DPS was less than optimal Let's say the least with only 1.2% of the damage done very important that you understand how 
how actors work, okay? An actor literally means something that was taking part in the fight, something that existed. This can be ads, this could be absolutely anything, okay? And you need to find out who's doing what during your fight. And the best way to do that is to select an actor and see what the hell was going on with those. What the hell was taking place? Why weren't things happening? Why aren't ads dying? Why has somebody got an obscene amount of damage taking place? Very, very easy to look at when we actually look at actors. The final thing, and probably the most important thing I want you guys to check, is to go back to your dashboard. And then select Trash. Trash slacking is my bugbear. My absolute bugbear. I hate trash slacking. So we're going to select damage done, and this is specifically on trash. Be aware, activity time is generally quite low on trash for a number of reasons, such as trash moving around, trash doing various other things, trash just not being able to be attacked, especially by melee. Uh, that can happen quite a lot. So you can see the actual activity time is 76%. I look for those people who do fuck all on trash. Again, there should only be a couple of percent difference. Usually casters should be higher because they can DPS while trash is moving around than anybody else. But what we can see here is dramatic reductions in people being active on trash. So we can see our friend Cooldowns again, who was AFKing this entire raid, only had 28% contribution towards this trash. That's a guy who needs a kicking. If he's in your raid, you need to give him a slap. Again, anything below low a couple of percent we would expect to see most people around 75 percent down to probably 70 percent always widen the margin for trash due to things moving around being out of range raids moving quick tanks pulling that kind of thing when it starts getting down towards 66 percent all the way down to 37 28 percent we have a major issue there a real major issue Remember, your healers will not have that much DPS activity time. They just won't have it. If you want to check healing, you have to go to healing done and say, who is healing on trash and who is slacking on trash? Trash needs to be killed. It really does. Your trash needs to be killed and killed fast to have a productive, progressive raid. So very easy to check this. A quick brief overlook can see, well, you know, 41% from Spank Slot. Maybe you could pick his ass up a little bit on Trash. We've even got people with only 65%. But again, the baller of the raid is Lasser J. Although his healing was relatively low, due, probably maybe due to gear or maybe due to not healing his class, he had 99% activity time during the Trash. That's the kind of guy I want in my raid. That guy is willing to put in the effort. And maybe if we just help him along with his spells and his gearing, this guy is going to become an asset to the raid. He really is. Everyone else, we really want to keep an eye out on. Who's slacking on your trash who's causing you overall problems on trash never nice to see people who just afk trash call them out on it give them a kicking and let them know what's what all right ballers